I just bought five broken Ari Alexos. While I was scouring eBay one day, I found this listing for five broken Ari Alexos for only $1,500. I sent them a message on eBay and said that I'm a YouTuber and I'd love to make a video about attempting to fix these cameras. And after what seemed like days of waiting, their sales department actually found my email through my YouTube channel and told me that they would love to help out and we eventually agreed on a price of $1,250. Now I'm no expert at repairing cameras, so I quickly did tons of research and ordered all the parts that I would need to hopefully fix these cameras. Now with all the parts at my disposal, all there was left to do was wait for the cameras. And after three long days, they finally arrived at my doorstep. After taking all the cameras out of the box and looking at their rough condition, I decided to try to power the first one up. So I plugged in the V-mount battery to the DC input on the camera, and nothing happened. Now even though the power button was missing on this camera, I used a conductive screw to try to power on that way, and it actually turned on. Now getting them to power on is great and all, but the real question is, can I fix them? Welcome to buying five Ari Alexas and trying to fix them part two. Now, if this is the first time you're seeing me or if you haven't seen part one of this video yet, you have to go watch part one before you see this. It'll provide all the context for everything. I'm gonna give you a second, just go click out of this video, go click the link down in the description and watch part one first. Now for everyone else that's already seen part one, Let's get right into this. So in the last video, we left off after testing Alexa number one for power and video output and stuff. And pretty much we found out that that camera powers on, it functions sort of. However, there's no output through the SDI cable from the sensor or any sort of video output in general. And it also has a couple sensor error codes. And then actually a new finding that I found after the video I kind of went in and looked inside the camera a little more and noticed that there was these two circuit boards that were missing kind of right behind the sensor area that were actually there in another Alexa that I have. So it looks like part of the sensor, maybe like the sensor control module or something over there is missing. And I'm guessing that's what's throwing off the codes on the camera and making it not show any sort of video output. And so I still don't have a full diagnosis of that camera. We can always go back to it if we need to. But what I'm guessing is that someone's already pretty much scavenged a bunch of parts from that camera and the sensor just isn't functional or there's pieces in there that are just non-functional and totally missing from there. Which makes me guess there's probably already some sort of sensor malfunction. And so, you know, one of the previous owners decided to scavenge some of the parts from it and then just, you know, get rid of it. So. That's my guess with Alexa number one. However, like I said, I don't have a full diagnosis or know exactly what's wrong with it yet. I just know there's no output from it. So in this video, I'm gonna move on to Alexa number two and Alexa number three, um, test those for power and functionality and video output, see if we can show any signs of life with the sensors in these cameras and hopefully even get some sort of recording from these cameras. That would be absolutely amazing. Also between part one and now, I learned that I do have the wrong SBIS card type and that's why those SBIS errors were showing up on the camera. So first things first, let's go ahead and swap the DC input from Alexa number one to Alexa number two and three and test those for functionality, see if they actually power on and then we'll go from there. So let's get into it. This is the DC input. We're gonna go ahead and get this in Alexa number two, put the side panel back on and see what happens, see if there's some powers on. I'm pretty hopeful now that I see those two little boards that go right by the sensor are in this one. Um, but I don't wanna get too hopeful, so <laughs> we're just gonna see what happens. I think we are ready to test this out and see if it powers on. This is a huge moment. Like number two, let's plug this power cable in with our newly installed power adapter. Okay, power supplied, battery fully charged. Alexa number two, let's test the power in three, two, one. Okay, all the lights turned on, of course screen worked. The fan powered on. The fan, yep, the fan's running right now. Starting user interface, this looks exactly like Alexa number one so far, which is seriously, an, oh, this is such a good sign. This is such a good sign. Okay, starting camera modules. So right now everything's looking exactly the same as Alexa number one. So let's see, let's give it a minute. It usually takes quite a while to start up all the modules. Okay, so far this looks the exact same. The 
there's still errors, that really sucks. However, let's go into this, see what it looks like, and kind of run through everything I could do with the other one. So first of all, info, no way. The only two errors are battery, are, are power oriented. And I believe those are because it's set to show a low battery error, a low battery warning if it's under like 20 volts because usually it's like 24 volts that most external inputs are. However, it accepts anywhere from I think 10 to 30. So this works for it and it still powers it up. But I think it's just warning because it's less than 20 volts. There's no media, so we still have to test out the S by S cards because there was an issue with those. At least the one I have. I really don't want to get too excited. <laughs> but so far, I'm. S this could be. This could be a very good sign. Okay, ProRes 4444. Four, four, four. Let's go back. System. Okay, fan mode, SD card, firmware. Yep, 11.1.1. 1, I believe that is the most updated firmware. Let's go to licensed features. Please have at least the high frame rate. Let, okay. High speed, so it has the high speed license. This can shoot 120 frames per second. Let's just double check that real quick. I know I'm, I should not be getting this excited before I even know if it can display anything. Okay, HD. Um, oh, I have to go. There we go. I guess I've never used an Ari Alexa before, so I'm not sure exactly, you know, all the functions. 60 frames per second, okay. I'm guessing I can only do it in like 422, not 44. Okay, either way, let's go back to info. Those are still the two only issues. So I'm going to hook up my SDI to HDMI adapter, my HDMI monitor right here. Everything should be ready to go. I just need to turn my monitor on. <laughs> Let's do this. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, it doesn't look like there's a signal. Double check this. Okay, it's getting power. So I'm going to switch between all the different SDI outputs and then I'm going to go into the menu and uh, see if I can, like, do something there to change the outputs or enable it or something. Oh. Okay. No way. Okay. Oh my gosh. It's out. It's outputting. I wonder if, I wonder if that was the issue with the other one. It was this, the format, the scan format. Okay, let me just try something crazy real quick. Um, shoot. I don't know, I'm just gonna grab a random lens. Okay, I'm gonna try my Canon FD lens real quick. I'm just gonna hold it up to the mount. Obviously this is nowhere near normal or ideal. <laughs> I just want to hold it up to there. Okay. No way. It's getting an output. It's very pink. Surround view. False color. Okay, false color functions. We're kind of somewhere with this one. It shows an image. The sensor appears to be somewhat working at least. It's all very pink. I don't know if that's just an issue of like, you know, there's no proper lens mount and lens on it, or if that's like some sort of other sensor issue or SDI output issue or something. But that is a very, very good sign. I believe I'm gonna move on to Lexa number three and do the same thing. See if I can get this output again because that is at least a very good sign. It shows that the sensor is somewhat functional.
look at that. Look at that, three Alexas out of the three. Well, at least they are Alexa Classics, not the Alexa M's. All three are Alexa Classics have started up so far with just a simple power input. That is honestly insane. Like that is crazy. So we'll let this go through. This usually takes like a couple of minutes at least to, you know, power up, sort through everything, sort the camera modules and whatnot. And then we'll run through this thing and see what it has. Okay, so it has an SBIOS error, which makes sense because the SBIOS, SBIOS card reader is not on there. Oh, I did get the fan in, um, but the SBIOS card reader is not in there. There's just nothing there where it's supposed to be. So that makes sense. And then there is still errors there. Let's go ahead and see, go to info, low power invalid card type, internal battery error. That's the same as Alexa number two, which means there's not all those weird sensor errors and stuff like there were on Alexa number one. That is a very good sign once again, like a very good sign. Let's go back and go to the menu. System and let's go to firmware. Okay, that's an older firmware. So I might try to update the firmware on this one as well. Let's go to licenses. Come on, please. Ooh, three sync license. Okay. Um, I'm not even sure exactly what that does. I'm guessing it's for th filming 3D, but it is a, still a license that's installed in this that probably costed some sort of ridiculous amount of money. So that is good. Uh, but no high speed license and no raw license, which is slightly sad, but I cannot complain. So yeah, it does have the slightly older firmware. So I think I'm gonna try to update the firmware, but I guess, first of all, let's try this SDI output again. So I just turn that on. I guess I'm not sure where to put this. Um, let's see if that's getting power. That's plugged into the mono out. Okay, so nothing right now. Let's go back what we did last time. So mono out. Turn that from PSF to P. Ooh, something. Okay. Let's cover that up. Let's see what happens. Ooh, see this? not doing anything when I cover that up. Okay, so that is just a plain white screen. No matter how much I cover the sensor or do anything, it's just a plain white screen. That's definitely not a very good sign at all. Looks like so far still Alexa number two has the best overall, you know, shows an output. I could have got an image on the screen with a lens and everything like that, but I'm gonna go through this and see if I can figure anything else out about this. All right, so it's been a few days. A few things have changed. First of all, I'm still on Alexa number three. As you just saw, it powered on, which is insane. All three Alexa classics have powered on. However, this one didn't have any sort of video output. It was just a blank white screen. However, you could see um, still like the border with all the information around the side, which makes me think it's not an SDI output issue. It's a sensor issue. However, actually right now, you might be able to see that, I don't know. I'm actually updating the firmware on this camera. It was at a little bit of an earlier firmware. So I'm gonna see if updating to the newest firmware makes any changes with the output. You know, maybe there's just something in the software that needs to be fixed. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just gonna see. You might have also noticed the monitor situation is a little different. So I actually got Finally, an SDI monitor, so I don't need that whole SDI adapter that needs to be plugged in separate and then, you know, adapted to HDMI to go into the monitor I had. I don't need all that sort of crazy stuff on the table now. I have an SDI monitor, a small HD 702 Bright, an amazing monitor, and I want to give a huge, huge shout out to Joshua Martin for hooking me up with a great deal on this monitor. He's actually also an awesome creator. I've been watching him for a while, so that was super neat. I'm gonna link him down in the description if you wanna check out his Instagram and YouTube. He's an awesome creator. And so that's kind of the update what's going on. I'm updating the firmware right now and we're gonna see if there's any difference with output. And then you also saw that this didn't have an SBIS uh, unit on the side of it. So I'm actually gonna swap over one of the SBIS, I don't know what they're called, an SBIS reader or Bay, I don't know. I'm gonna swap over one of those from the other Alexas over to Alexa number three because maybe it's possible that since it didn't detect it, 
It just isn't gonna show any output. It's just an idea. I'm just gonna swap it over and see what happens. But that's where we're at right now. So just waiting for it to finish updating. So as soon as that's done, we'll kind of look through this again with the new nice big monitors to be able to see it better. And then I'll also put on the SBIS unit on the side of this camera to see if that makes a difference as well. Let's get right into it. All right, so just got done updating. It says press with the power button, so let's shut that off, power it back on, see what happens. All right, there we go. So it's booted back up. Should have the most up-to-date firmware now. Let's see, let's go to info. Okay, S by S error, which makes sense. System error. Don't know about that. Low battery power and internal battery error. Um, I also figured out 100%, those are just because I have a 14 volt battery, but it expects a 24 volt input from this. However, it can still accept anything from, I think, 12 to 30 volts. So any battery errors are not, not real. <laughs> they really don't mean anything. Um, everything's fine with the battery and stuff. But invalid card type, yep. S by S error, that makes sense. And then system error, I don't know about that, but let's go through. So 11.1.134260, that is the most up-to-date firmware. Um, yep, no media. It says error though, but there is no SPS card, so it should just say no media, but it's probably just because it has an error because obviously, you know, there's literally no <laughs> SPS card drive in there. So it doesn't know what's going on probably. System, you can see right here, 625 hours. I don't know if I said this in the last part or anything like that. The Alexa number one had, I believe, 1,400 70 hours or something it was just under 1500 hours alexa 2 had like 750 hours or something like that this one has 625 all three of the alexa classics these that's really really low hours like that's super low hours for a camera from 2010 i mean it makes me wonder how long these are even in use but it really really makes me wonder what could have possibly happen to these cameras to be in this condition. I mean, this one you can see it's, well, I guess I don't know how well you can see that, but it is really beat up. I mean, there's like dents, there's deep scratches, a bunch of scuffs, and then obviously, you know, crazy amounts of stuff's missing from it. But Alexis two and three being well under a thousand hours for 12 year old, you know, beast of a cinema camera. I mean, these things can probably run for 10,000 hours. And there's probably many of them out there that have close to that many hours on them. So it really, really just makes me wonder what could have possibly happened to these? Like maybe they were crash cams in like a super high production film and you know, they got totally beat up and they just discarded them afterwards and, and sold them to a wholesale buyer or something like that. I don't know, it really, really makes me wonder. Either way, you can see right here, it's still the same plain white output. The sensor is actually fully covered right now, so it should be a pitch black output, and it's still just bright white, but it still shows all the info. So it makes me think it's not an issue with any sort of video output, it's an issue with the sensor. However, I'm still gonna throw on an SBIS um, unit on the side of the camera, and then I'll get right back to here and you know test it out again. Uh, but real quick before the job, I'm just gonna go through all the different ISO settings. Oh, okay. So, if you start at highest ISO, it's bright white, then I don't know if you can see this, it's very subtle. I'm gonna go all the way down, and it darkens a little bit. Okay, but the shutter angle doesn't affect anything, which it should be affecting it a lot. So I guess that makes me a little bit less hopeful. <laughs> so I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna do the test signal, that's what I was looking for. I should output to here. Yep, there we go. Yeah, okay. So that pretty much proves that the output on this, everything with the output is fully functional. I mean, there's no issues with this image that's just outputting from the camera itself, not from the sensor. So that is kind of sad. I was hoping maybe be this little unit right here that has SDI ports that I could swap over or something. It looks like it's some sort of issue with the sensor. However, I'm gonna do another thing. Um, I'm going to take a screen grab. So this right here will pretty much save a picture of whatever it sees on the screen to the SD card. I'm gonna see if that's at all different than this white screen. So I'm gonna turn like, 
my shutter all the way down and the ISO all the way down so it should be a very dark image um, but it's still really bright so if I take a photo a screen grab and look at it and it is super dark then I know it might be some issue with the output if it's the same as this it's probably something with the sensor cool so those saved to the SD card so I'm gonna see if anything shows up with those on my computer and then also install the SBIS unit in this and then go through it again. I'm gonna swap over the SBIS drive from Alexa number one over to Alexa number three. Now, if you're wondering what happened to Alexa number one, why the uh, you know whole front half here is missing, I actually made a video. I'm not sure if it'll be out while you're watching this or afterwards, but what is out right now is the full uncut version of it on my second channel. I actually did a full teardown on this camera and just took the entire thing apart just to see what's inside of it, see how it's built. It was honestly an insane experience. It was really scary, um, but that is what happened to this. It's still not fully put back together, but if you do want to see that video, I'll link the full uncut. It's a one hour long video of just tearing this thing down. I'll link that down in the description. And if I do have the version on this channel now, which is a lot more cut up um, and a lot shorter and just more right into it, I'll leave that link down in the description as well, but I'm not sure if that'll be up after or before this one that you're seeing right now. But either way, just two screws to pop this off and then there's actually, and then there's this connector right here that you can probably see. Yeah, now this one, while I did the teardown, I had to take this off as well. It was really weird. I don't even really know like the best way to get in that to pry it up. Oh, I got my fingers right there. Kinda. I use a screwdriver. Don't do anything I do in any of these videos at home. I just want to say it right now. I'm not an expert by literally any means. I'm just tinkering around. I'm trying to learn. So I just want to say that. But I used a screwdriver to pry it up. Oh, I thought I was gonna have to do it again. I was gonna say, that's probably not a good idea, but I got it with my fingers. There's just really no place to like get under it to pry it up. It's really weird. So there's that from Alexa number one. Let's move it over to Alexa number three. Then we can test everything again. All right, while that's booting up, if you're enjoying this video and this series so far, please go down and hit the like button and subscribe. It would really, really help me out to push this video to new audiences. And also, if you want to, maybe share this video on social media or something like that. Um, I would really, really appreciate it. And it really just, it seriously helps my channel out a lot. There we go. All right, it's powered on. That's not good news. Still plain white screen. I'm gonna go out on a limb and just say, it's, an, it's a sensor issue. Something's wrong with the sensor. Sadly, so my diagnosis with this and Alexa number one are sensor issues, just, you know, dead sensors on the cameras. That's what I'm gonna diagnose it right now. Officially though, I don't know the issues, but I think what we need to do is move on to Alexa number two. I'll kind of give you the rundown of what's going on with that. And then we'll um, keep moving on with Alexa number two because that looks like our best option right now. It actually like, it actually showed an image on the screen that's the best thing we've gotten so far besides, obviously all of them powering on is amazing. But let's actually move back to Alexa number two, see what we can do with that. All right, so here's the rundown on Alexa number two. So of course this is the one with the pink output. However, it still did display an image when I held up a lens to the lens mount or what was left of the lens mount at least. And so I've been posting a lot of updates on Facebook groups and just kind of talking about what I've been doing and asking questions and stuff. And a few people suggested that the pink screen might be because of a missing IR cut filter in front of the sensor. And I took a look at it and that sensor actually was missing from Alexa number two. However, Alexa number one or three, I'm not sure which one, had that little IR cut filter on it, and it essentially cuts all the IR light out of, you know, the light that's letting in. And so apparently IR, or infrared light pollution, will pretty much cause that really pink image. Um, and that cut filter basically gets rid of all that and essentially fixes that image, I guess. So really what's the worst that can happen? I'm gonna swap that IR cut filter onto Alexa number two. And while I'm at that, I'm gonna install the C7 adapters lens mount as well. Just get all that over with so that I can mount an actual lens onto the camera and just really see what type of image I can get out of this camera. At this point, this is literally the only camera that has any sort of output. So I'm just gonna go all in on Alexa number two. I am super, super excited for this part. 
I mean, just the fact that we got an image out of Alexa number two is just, is so insane. So let's go do all that, see what happens. So I got the C7 adapters EF mount on the camera. First of all, this thing is amazing, fantastic quality. It's an active lock system. So, you know, you're gonna be able to tighten the lens on there really well. It has a metal body cap. Like this is literally a, just a piece of aluminum, which is crazy. But either way, now that that's on and I can actually attach a lens to this camera and not just have to like hold it up to it. I'm going to get all this, you know, my monitor, HDMI to SDI adapter power system, all that attached to this camera, get it all ready to go, attach a lens to it, and then I can fully test the sensor readout, make sure there's no issues with the sensor itself, like any weird lines in it, or, you know, like spots in the sensor, dead pixels or anything like that. And I think after that, I'm going to kind of go through and clean this up a little bit. There's a few missing parts and things I can kind of get situated on it since, so far this is the most working camera. This is the one I'm gonna really um, go into to get it fully functioning. And then we'll kind of go through the rest afterwards. There's a 15 millimeter rod mounts on the front here. One of them is actually missing like the screw part. So I'm gonna try to get that in. Just a few little things and get it cleaned up and whatnot. And then we'll um, run through and test the whole thing out, test the sensor, make sure everything's functioning. And as soon as we get the SPIS card in, we can record and see if this thing actually outputs video to a card. So. I'm super pumped. Let's go ahead and get all this set up. All right, so I got this stuff kind of attached. I need to get some Velcro so I can attach this V-mount plate to the back of the camera. Um, you know, not permanently, I can just Velcro it. And then same with this, I can Velcro the HDMI to SDI adapter. I got the lens mounted as well. This is actually my Tokina 28 to 70 F 2.6 to 2.8. I'm getting a fully normal image out of this right now, which is Crazy, it's so crazy to see that coming out of this camera. Wow, okay, so yeah, all the informations are on the side there. All the settings are on there, so I'm gonna go ahead and just go through all the different ISO settings, everything like that, see what happens. So far, the image looks fairly normal. It looks kind of soft, um, which is probably just from the lens. You know, when I stop down there, it seems to help a lot. I do want to Maybe get like some white, a white surface in front of it so I can check if there's any like spots or any like dead pixels. Um, but I can really check a lot more for that sort of stuff once I get the S by S card and can record footage and then go into my editing software and zoom in on everything um, and really check everything then. But right now, this is looking awesome so far. Like this is seriously insane. I can't believe just that IR cut filter fixed that pink image and then, you know, it's just working fine. So. Of course, I don't wanna get my hopes up yet until I can fully record footage, test it there. But I'm gonna go ahead and go through the settings. I do see something. I don't know if you can, you probably can't see that. I don't think you can see it. There's like, almost like, looks like a hair in the very center. That's definitely something that could be an issue, something on the sensor or some sort of issue there. I guess so far, everything looks really, really good besides that weird little, what looks like a piece of hair right in the center of the screen. I'm gonna look at that. I'm gonna go a close up look on the sensor, see if there's any little, you know, pieces of dust or something on the sensor. Besides that, the image coming out of this looks completely normal. Absolutely unbelievable. So. Awesome, now I guess we just gotta wait for the SBIS card. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of clean this camera up, get a few other things situated on this camera, wait for the SBIS card, and we'll see what kind of footage we can get out of this. Or if any footage, I guess I should say.
we got video output. <laughs> we got output. A full image on here. It looks really good. I'm pretty sure I talked about it on the last clip you saw, but there is that weird little, what looks like a hair on the image there. I took some screen grabs, imported on my computer. First of all, the screen grabs look amazing. I'm so excited to try to record a video with this as soon as I get the right SPS card. But the screen grabs from it looked amazing. However, that little hair, whatever it is that's still on there, I zoomed in on it. It really does just look like a little piece of lint or hair or something. I um, looked really, really close at the sensor, as close as I could. Honestly, I could, I could barely see anything, but I think, I think I can see what looks like a little hair. However, it's behind the IR cut filter, behind, I think it's just a protective piece of glass that goes in front of the actual true sensor and directly on what I think is the actual sensor. So behind the IR cut filter, behind another piece of glass on the sensor that I can't get to. I really, I would need to, let me actually, this is the sensor block from Lux number one. Uh, I guess I'll go with the top camera. I would need to like remove all this stuff, pull all that out just to try to get that little hair off this actual sensor. During that process, who knows if I'll get even more pieces of duster hair on that while, I don't know. It's not a challenge I'm willing to take on, especially since this is the only fully functional camera. I would be so, so let down if I went to do that and ended up breaking something on the only fully working camera. So, long story short, I could probably send it in to get serviced and get that fully cleaned. I don't even want to know how much that would cost. Like, I feel like it would cost half as much as I paid for all these cameras. So, if you have any ideas of how to get this little thing, again, I'm still not 100% sure if it's a hair. That's really what it looks like. I try to get as close of a look as I can, and that is my best guess. Like, I'm probably 95% sure that's what it is but it still could be a little scratch on the sensor or a little, I don't know, some sort of damage to the actual sensor, not a piece of hair. But if you have any ideas of how I could get that off, please let me know. You know, at this point, I still don't know if it fully records a video, so maybe there's an issue with the SBIS um, unit on this camera, which wouldn't be bad because I have another one that I could, you know, that would hopefully work if this one didn't that I could swap over. Um, obviously, I gotta get this fan cover on. I need to get the hardware for it, so I'm gonna have to, I guess, either figure out what thread size that is or just bring this camera to my local hardware store. So that's that's all we have left to do. Um, yeah, let's just uh, wait for that spice card, clean this up a little bit, and we'll see what happens. While I'm waiting for the right memory card to come through for Aria Alexa number two, which is the one that we have, I think, fully functioning right now, I actually just got done um, swapping a few things around. So if you watched my full teardown of Alexa number one, I have that on my second channel. It's a full one hour just tearing the camera apart, looking at everything inside of it. During the process of doing that, I found out that the sensor block wasn't even actually attached to the rest of the body. There's these, actually these right here, these little ribbon cables pretty much connect from the sensor block itself to the rest of the body to, you know, pair them together and pretty much get it functioning. These were missing in Alexa number one. So the sensor literally was not even attached to the camera body, which is why I was getting all those errors and having all those issues. But the body of Alexa number one, you know, it turned on, everything seemed to function normally. Um, you know, besides obviously having no output from the sensor and that not functioning at all. The rest of the body seemed to be fine. And then Alexa number three, we had that issue with just showing a white screen and not getting really any output either. But that I wasn't really sure what the issue is because there was no sensor errors or anything like that. So I really couldn't fully pinpoint what the issue with Alexa number three was. Um, it was just showing basically a white screen, a white output from the sensor that really didn't change much with any sort of settings being adjusted. So I actually just got done swapping over the sensor block from Alexa number three 
over to the rest of the body from Alexa number one. I plugged everything in with a sensor that I needed to, to the body of Alexa number one. So now I'm about to power this up, um, try to update the firmware again, because you also might remember the firmware update failed on Alexa number one, but I believe that was because the sensor wasn't even attached, so it couldn't update the sensor part of the firmware because it literally couldn't even find the sensor. So first of all, I don't even know if this powers up. So that's the first thing, but if it does power up, I'm gonna try to update the firmware again and then see if I can get any output with the body of Alexa number one and the sensor block of Alexa number three. So I already got done swapping that over and then I swapped the um, power input from Alexa number two onto this and it should be able to be powered up at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Nope, doesn't look like it. <laughs> Just adjust this. Yeah, it kind of makes it a little brighter and then when you turn down, it's a little pink. Let's put it the native ISO. Shutter. Yeah, still no output. Still the same, the same type of thing. Just with newer firmware. <laughs> All right, so I was just looking at the sensor block from Alexa number one that we took apart. Now, just kind of looking in there to see if there's any way that I could get in there or try to figure out a way to get that little piece of hair off the sensor of Alexa number two. And so I was just kind of messing around. I got my little blower here and I was just trying to blow air in all these screw holes or really anywhere I could to see if there's anything that led behind the sensor to just try to blow it out of the way of the sensor. And so there was actually a little piece of something on this sensor as well. So it's kind of a perfect opportunity to just see if I could find any way to get air behind there to kind of dust it off. Definitely not the best option because it'll still probably be back there once I blow it off with this, but it'll at least hopefully be better than, you know, what it has been without having to, you know, pay a ridiculous amount of money to go get it serviced. And so I already tried on Alexa number two, just blowing in all of these screw holes and everything around here and, you know, in that hole and everything to try to get air behind there. But I was just messing around with this one and I actually tried these tiny little screw holes right there that hold the IR cut filter on. And I blew right through that one and a piece of dust just blew right off the center. So I'm gonna try that on Alexa number two. I have no idea if it'll actually work, but that is so far our best option right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and try blowing air down these two little screw holes right here, seeing if I can get that piece off the center of Alexa number two. All right, that took a long time. I pretty much had to tear the whole um, front end of Alexa two apart and get the IR cut filter out of there but it worked. I blew through that little screw hole that I was talking about and it blew that little piece of hair right off the sensor, which proves that it was a hair and not scratching the sensor, which I was really worried about. And it got it off the sensor. Crazy. So there's no more hair on the sensor. There's a full clean output coming out of it. We're all set to test it as soon as we get the SYS card in the mail. Finally. Here it is. I originally ordered this on July 7th. Something happened during shipping and it never ended up showing up. So I ordered another one and now it's July 22nd. It just got here. Of course, the final little piece of the puzzle that I need to see if this records footage took two weeks to even get figured out and, you know, get here. But it's finally here. This is literally the last thing I need. This camera should be all ready to go got the battery plate on get the monitor uh, there's no more errors everything should be ready to go with this to hopefully record some prores 4444 <laughs> re footage onto this s by s card so all we have left to do is plug in the battery plug this thing in try to record some footage let's do this <laughs> let's do this Wait for that to power up and then slide this thing in. It's a little beat up, but it is a Sony SBIS Pro 64 gigabyte card. So I'm not sure how much uh, runtime I'm gonna get on 64 gigabytes. We'll have to figure that out as we go. But at least this is enough to at least test this. Hopefully, if it didn't break. This is at least enough to hopefully test it, get some footage with it. 
Um, you know, if I decide to keep this camera long term, I can obviously buy more of these, buy a 128 gigabyte one, which are pretty expensive, but all right, there we go. That's turned on. I have the Tokina 28 to 70 f2.6 to 2.8 lens on here. One of my favorite lenses. This is definitely what I'm gonna use the most with this camera. I did end up getting that little hair off the screen. Um, I had to pretty much take that IR cut filter off and blow with my little duster into like a screw hole that kind of blew air behind that and blew the little piece of hair off the sensor. So that is done. However, there are what looks to be three or four dead pixels on this. They don't really affect the image much and I'm still gonna be able to obviously record with it and stuff like that. Um, but I'm gonna try pixel masking to get rid of those dead pixels or I guess to cover up the dead pixels. It shows it in there, let's see. I guess you can't really see the menu, you can just see the monitor right now. But I'm gonna go ahead and format the card real quick which shouldn't, you know, there shouldn't be any issues with that. Yeah, no errors with the card. <sighs> All right, let me just check one more thing. Let's go to recording. So we're in ProRes 4444 in 2K right now. Pre-record, we'll turn pre-record off. Oh, my, look at that, actually I just saw that. 25 minutes, so with 64 gigabytes, it says we can record for 25 minutes. That's not very long. This is big right here. If this records, we will have, uh, for the most part, fully functioning Ari Alexa for $1,250. Three, <laughs> two, one. <laughs> There's no way. It's recording. All right, I'm gonna, hit, I'm gonna hit stop recording on this record button, see if that one works. <laughs> I think it recorded, 24 minutes remaining. Okay, I'm gonna record one more clip real quick. I'm gonna kind of move it around a little bit. So let's actually try like a different frame. Let's try 60 frames per second. All right, it's recording. Now I'm gonna, I don't know, move this around a little bit. I don't have any side handles on this right now. This could possibly be <laughs> the first clip recorded on the Alexa Classic. Stop recording. Let's go see if we can import these onto the computer. Show it up. Oh my gosh, there they are. Look at that. Okay, let me open up Final Cut. Let's see if we can import these in there. Apple ProRes 4444, 2048 by 1152. Look at that. It's on the timeline. Let's see if we can play it. We officially have a working Alexa. Let's go shoot some footage. <laughs> This was one of the most amazing, fulfilling, just one of the best projects I have ever taken on in my entire life. Probably none of you really know this, but I pretty much started out when I was, I don't even know how young. I can't even like guess how young I was. Pretty much from the youngest age I can remember, 
I've always had this urge to just take stuff apart and just learn about stuff. So through my life growing up, I've probably taken apart a countless amount of random things from like computers to mice, VCRs, um, DVD players, radios, anything you can even imagine, probably stuff that I shouldn't have, I just took apart just to learn about it and see what's inside of it and look at all the different electronics. I was always huge into just electronics like that growing up and I did, you know, worked on little circuit board projects and soldering and stuff like that when I was like 12 years old. And then a little bit after that, I guess it, it overlapped quite a bit, but I was also huge into uh, making movies. You know, starting at 11 years old, I was uploading uh, movies that me and my friends would make to YouTube. At 11 years old, I was doing that, posting these videos to YouTube, just super interested in making, you know, films, I guess you'd call them, like that. And so both of those interests have kind of always overlapped. I've, you know, had countless other hobbies since then. But this project really just opened both of those hobbies of mine up, merged them together in just such an amazing way. I mean, this is just something that's been a dream of mine. I've been watching Tronics Fix, if you know who that is, for years now. Loving those videos about repairing stuff, Obviously, I have nowhere near that experience, um, and luckily I didn't have to do any crazy amount of stuff with this, like soldering, swapping out capacitors and stuff, because I would not have been able to do that. I was lucky enough with this project that it was pretty simple to get this one going, but this something like this is just a project I've always wanted to take on, and the fact that it just perfectly merged so many of my hobbies into this project of trying to fix these Alexas, my dream camera, you know, probably a camera that all filmmakers just look at like it's this prize trophy to have. The fact that I was able to mix buying one of my dream cameras into trying to fix something and get it going and taking it apart and just learning about it. Truly one of the greatest experiences of my life. It's honestly kind of sad to see it somewhat come to an end here. So happy that I got this working and I'm gonna make a bunch of content about this. So stay subscribed and subscribe if you're not already. This is personally just one of the most amazing things I've ever taken on. And I'm really glad that you guys were all able to come on this journey with me and, you know, go through this entire process with me. It was super exciting. You know, honestly, it was so much fun just documenting everything and just talking to people and all the help that you've all given me has just been amazing as well. I've gotten a countless amount of DMs, emails, comments, messages, um, of people just helping me and supporting me with this project and just being as excited as I am to try to get one of these running. So, I'm done ranting. You saw the footage. We have a working Aria Alexa. Now, when it comes to everything else, my final conclusion is that this is the only working sensor. Um, I swapped the sensor from Alexa 3 onto the body of Alexa number 1 which the Alexa 1 body didn't really have any errors except for the sensor errors. It was still the same issue that I had with Alexa number 3 with just pretty much no feed coming from the sensor. And then also the sensor from Alexa number 1, originally the one that we took apart, um, I figured out was missing a bunch of stuff from the sensor block. And I'm gonna go ahead and call that also just a dead sensor, which would make sense because that's probably the biggest reason people discard these cameras. Otherwise they can, you know, probably find parts for cheaper than it costs to replace a sensor if it was something else in this buttons or one of the boards in here that you can replace pretty easily. My final conclusion, we have a working Alexa. Uh, probably a lot of the parts are functional, um, you know, in the bodies and the brains of those cameras for all the other Alexas. However, the other two sensor blocks that we have, uh, my conclusion with those is they are just completely dead which essentially means for me, with my skills, my talent, 100% unfixable, I definitely don't have enough talent and skills to try to bring anything else back to life with this, which I'm 100% okay with. I knew going into this project that I am nowhere near, anywhere close to being an expert at anything like this. I just pretty much took this on to learn as much as I could. And, you know, I think it worked out pretty well with my limited experience and limited knowledge. But everything else, I'm gonna go ahead and call it parts. I'm probably gonna sell what I can in terms of these parts and try to make back as much as I can 
um, from everything I've invested into this project. Um, but my goal is to get as much money as I can back from what I spent on this project. And that's that. I'm gonna make more videos about this Alexa on my channel. I'll do some comparisons. I don't know, I wanna get a bunch of content with it. So stay tuned for that. But that is the conclusion for buying five broken Ari Alexas for $1,250 and trying to fix them. Huge thank you to everyone, seriously everyone that has supported me through this project. This was one of the greatest things I've ever taken on and I couldn't have done it without all of your help. Every single one of you watching this right now couldn't have done it without your help. So thank you, subscribe, like this video, and I'll see you in the next one.